Good morning, and welcome to Deaf Bible Study for this week. It's an exciting week. We have a special, special thing that's going to happen later this next week. What? We celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. And so today we want to, we're going to focus on a little bit on that. A little different. You'll notice the title has changed a little bit here. Uh, normally we are in a series at the feet of Jesus. Today, today I have changed the title to at the feet of God. You'll see why in just a little bit. Let's pray and we'll begin today. Our Heavenly Father, we pause because we need you. I, I need you. I, I want to be a blessing to the folks who are here today. And I pray that you will use me today to touch the hearts of the people who are watching. Not me, but the truths of your word. Help me to be faithful and true and stay on track with the Bible. And help me to teach it clearly, I pray. I pray for the folks who are watching today. Some maybe who are thinking Christmas is about Santa Claus and the tree and the lights, uh, the lights and different things. I pray that they will see today the real focus of Christmas, of, of Christmas is Christ. So help us to be uh, clear today. I pray that you will guide our thoughts, our attitudes, and our actions through the study of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to get right started. Uh, today, I'm going to go all the way back to before the creation of the earth. Uh, the Bible tells us that before anything was created, the earth, the animals, different things, the earth itself was just dark. Uh, the, the, it was a void. It was empty. It was just darkness everywhere. There was nothing. There was no, no beauty. There was nothing to see. Uh, and here we see that that, that darkness, really, uh, people have a hard time describing darkness. Uh, darkness is not something that's easy to understand, but we know what it is. There is no scientific explanation for darkness, only that it is the absence of light. It's kind of a strange definition for the word darkness. But this earth was covered in, well, there really was no earth. It was just darkness. But God decided that he was going to create something beautiful, something special. And God spoke and he created the earth. The very first thing that God created, it's interesting. The first thing God created, what? Light. That was a good choice. We need light today. I want you to remember something. Light always pushes out darkness. Darkness and light cannot live together. They cannot touch each other. A darkness will be destroyed by light. And so that's important. We're going to see that later as we study today. But the world, as, as God saw it, he made it so that, uh, so that it had these things. Now, we know that. We have seen these things. Uh, this is a beautiful picture uh, from the sky, taking a picture of the earth. But God made our earth with seas and land, dry land, and sky. And, and when God did that, he was just getting started. He also put on the earth, on the earth vegetation, uh, plants that grew, so man in the future would be able to eat those things and live. He made the vegetation on the earth. By the way, when God did that, it made the earth beautiful. 
colors were sprinkled all around the earth. The, the different colors of fruits and vegetables and flowers and trees and all those things, it made the earth beautiful. And God made also put on the earth nine million, nine million different kinds of animals here on the earth. And they began to walk here on the earth. But God was not finished, you know that. God then made a man. And God said, let us make man in our image. God made man. You'll notice the words us and our. Let us and our. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had a part in the creation of man. You and I are made in the image of God. Means what? It means that God gave us a mind, ability to think, reason, understand, search things, discover things, learn. And God gave us the opportunity to have a relationship with him. It was amazing. God made that first man, Adam. And Adam, he walked with God. They talked together. They fellowshiped together, the two of them, God and Adam. But God noticed everything he had made was good, 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 good. But when he looked at Adam, he said, it is not good for this man, Adam, to be alone. He needs a helper. And we know that's true. We men, we need helpers. And God took a rib from Adam and he made, he created Eve. The, the two of them walked with God. They fellowshiped with God. They had communication with God. Uh, they loved each other. The time there in the Garden of Eden was a wonderful, beautiful time. Uh, many, many wonderful things happen, but for, for our time, we need to condense a little bit. God made man, you and me, with the ability to taste. That's wonderful. I love food. I love to taste good food. I'm thankful for the ability to taste. I'm also thankful for a mind that's able to reason and and understand things and examine things. That's a wonderful thing. I'm thankful for the, the sensation of touch. Touch is wonderful. I love when in the morning my wife will come, I hug her. I, I love to touch and feel a hug back and hug her at night. During the day we will hug, we love each other. That, that sense of touch is important. And God gave us Hearing people, ears that hear, but God gave us eyes that can see. These eyes are amazing. Scientists who have studied the stars and all of the beautiful gems, uh, gems, precious stones in the earth have studied. And when they study the eye, they say the eye cannot be explained. It's an amazing thing, the eye itself how it can see and focus and the pupil, you know, gets bigger and smaller. All of this happens and we don't even know about that. But our eyes, they can bring us trouble too, right? I know for you, for me, it's happened. But it also happened for Adam and Eve. Because Eve one day was in the garden and the serpent, the devil, pulled Eve how? Well, look, the Bible says that Eve, she, the, the fruit of the tree, you know, God told them, don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch. But one day Eve looked at that tree and she saw it was good for food. 
But also notice the end of the verse uh, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, the end of the verse, that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. She looked at that fruit. Hmm. She thought herself, I'm sure it is good. I'm sure it tastes wonderful. And it is beautiful. It is beautiful to my eyes. And it drew her. And do you know what happened? She went to that tree. She reached out for the fruit. She ate. She gave it to Adam. Adam took. He ate. And what happened? Everything changed. Why? Sin. Sin had come into the world. Sin was now a part of the life of Adam and Eve. It had never been that way before. And you remember, God would come down and he would talk with Adam and Eve and they would walk together and they would fellowship together. And it was sweet, sweet uh, fellowship with God. And now it was broken. And now Adam and Eve understand we are naked. They're fearful. They're hiding in the bushes. When God shows up again, they're afraid. And God spoke to the serpent. God spoke to the devil. And it's important we see what God said to the devil. I want you to read it here. It's Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, read it carefully, okay? Take your time. Read it. I'm going to explain it to you in just a moment. Remember, these are the words God spoke to the serpent. Really, the serpent who? The serpent who? Right. The serpent, the devil had come into the body of a serpent. And God spoke to the serpent. But really, God's words here are spoken to the devil himself. And God said to the devil, I will put enmity enmity. Really, it's a strong word, and it means hatred, deep hatred. I will put hatred between, he says, thee, the devil, and the woman. He goes on to say, and between thy seed, like children, or for the devil, it would be demons. For the woman, it's going to be a son. He said, I'm going to put Enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her, her seed or her child and her, it, her child will bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise the child, his heel. So God says to the devil, I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to promise you that the woman will have a, a child. We know it is a son because we see his, his. We know that the woman, by the way, it does not say, it does not say the couple's child. It says the seed of her seed, the woman, does not talk about a man involved. We know this verse, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, we saw Adam and Eve take of the fruit and eat. And here in verse 15, just a few verses later, after they have sinned, God says to the devil, I'm going to make you a promise. In the future, the seed of the woman will bruise thy head. It will mean the death of Satan. And God said, you, Satan, you will hurt the heel of her, her son. His, his heel. It will, not, it will not forever kill, but it will hurt. And so this is the promise that God made all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, 
verse 15. So who is this son? Who? Uh, and how could that son forgive the sins of man? But that's exactly what this verse is explaining. God said, I will send a redeemer. I will send a person who will destroy you and defeat you, devil. You will hurt the, the son, but the son will destroy you. And we know that that happened. Uh, now I want you to turn. Uh, we're going to go into the New Testament. We know who that son is. It's Jesus. We know that God allowed Mary, Mary, and Joseph to become the parent, the parents of baby Jesus. Really, Mary, his mother, but Joseph, if you remember, Mary is a virgin. She had never known any time with, with uh, Joseph. But God placed inside Mary the Son of God. And I want you to open your Bibles. I, I'm not going to put all the verses here today. So I want you to open your Bibles and leave through a little bit. We're going to go to two different places. They're near to each other. The first is here in Galatians, Galatians chapter 4. You'll see it here. Galatians chapter 4, and we're going to look at two verses. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and verse 5. And I want you to see it on the pages of your Bible, all right? So open your Bible there to Galatians chapter 4. Here, the Bible says clear what happened. Now, I want you to remember all that I just told you, okay, about the beginning and sin coming into the world and uh, God's speaking to the devil and what would happen. And now we're going to come all the way forward, almost 4,000 years into the future from Genesis. I'm going to say it again so you understand me. From Adam and Eve here, sin comes into the world. God prom promises the devil here in Genesis chapter 3, all the way forward to what is going to be talked about here in Galatians is about 4,000 years later. So we have seen Moses, Abraham, Noah, David, all these people, all of the prophets. We've seen all those people have come. And the Bible says here in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, it says this, but, I love that word, different, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. These are two wonderful verses. I want to look at them a little bit. Uh, first, I want you to see that God, in his wisdom, he knew the exact right time. When the fullness of time was come, God knew the exact right time for Jesus to be born here on, in this, earth, on this earth. And God made a promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that there would be a child of a woman. And we know that that's what happened. Mary was the woman. And God allowed Jesus to be born from her. Remember, it was about 4,000 years from Adam and Eve when the promise was first made by God in Genesis chapter 3. It's about 4,000 years into the future. And we arrive here about 4 or 5 B.C. Understand? Uh, the, the year is about 4 or 5 B.C. BC. And we, we see Jesus being born. It's interesting that for four, 400 years, now from Adam and Eve to the birth of Jesus is about 4,000 years. But for the last 400 years of that time, God himself Did 
did not speak. Prophets, nothing from God. Every day the prophet would, God, silence from God. It was a sad time. We talked before about darkness. That was a dark time in the history of man. Why? Because God, he did not speak. But it says in Galatians chapter 4 that God sent forth his son. So today, our series has been called At the Feet of Jesus. Today, I change it to At the Feet of God. Why? Because Jesus Christ, this little baby, had spent time at the feet of God. And God sent his one and only beloved son, Jesus Christ, to come here to the earth, to be born in that manger to Mary and Joseph. God sent his son. It was God's choice, God's plan, God's action. God sent forth his son. Jesus came from heaven. Uh, many people say, oh, I believe Jesus was a good man. And he was. Some say, oh, I believe Jesus was a good teacher. Oh, oh I believe Jesus himself was a, a rabbi. All those things are true, but Jesus is much more than all those little things. Those, simp those simple things, Jesus was much more than that. Jesus Christ came from God. And Paul in Galatians here, he tells us why he came. He says in verse 5, verse 5, it says, to redeem them that are under the law. This is amazing. Jesus Christ left heaven to come here to be born as a baby, to grow up. Why? To redeem you and me. Redeem. It means what? It means redeem redeem it means to buy from the marketplace of sin and paul said you and i we have the law here uh, we have god gave us his word he gave us the law but you and i we cannot match the law we break and break and break and break and break we disobey and disobey and disobey and we are under it's like uh, the law is a huge a giant and his foot is on our neck and we cannot we cannot stand up every time we do right we fall and we sin again and the law crushes us again we are under the law but Jesus came to redeem people who were under the law it means Jesus Christ came for me he came for you every person who has tried to obey the law complete and failed and failed and failed. And that is every person. Jesus came for us. And he came to redeem us, to buy us from the marketplace of sin. Jesus came for you and for me. Jesus came to do what I could not do. He came to buy us back. God made us in his image. You remember in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God made us in his image, but we marred his image when we sin. Sin is not a part with God. We chose sin ourselves, following the devil instead of following God. And we have been a mess ever since. And Jesus came here to buy us back for God. What an exciting thought. We need a redeemer. Who is that redeemer? Is that baby Jesus Christ? Well, let me go on. I want to show I want to show you another place. Now, so from Galatians go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, just a few pages toward the back of your of your Bible, chapter 2. I want to show you some incredible verses here in Philippians 
chapter 2. I'm going to begin in verse 5, okay? Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. You want to see these verses. They're amazing. If you underline in your Bible, these are good verses to mark. They're wonderful. You want to go back and read them again and again and again. But it says here in Philippians chapter 2, let this mind be in you, be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Verse 5, verse 5, it means your, your mind should copy the mind of Christ. Verse 6, who, Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 6 says, Jesus was at the feet of God. Why? Because Jesus and God are the same. They're equal. Verse 7, But Jesus made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant was made in the likeness of men. This is amazing. God made Adam in his image. Jesus took on the image of Adam when he was born here. He was a normal baby boy. Five fingers, five fingers, toes, a nose, a mouth, ears, eyes, hair. He was a normal person. He became in the image of the man, Adam. And it says here that, that he, he was made of no reputation and became like a servant. Think about it for a little bit. Jesus Christ, who before and still is fully God, became full man. He was made in the form of a servant. I mean, think about Jesus Christ's job when he was here on the earth growing up. He grew up in the home of his father was a carpenter, a carpenter. He, uh, he made buildings from stone and wood. That's hard work. They, whew, you have to sweat to do that. And it's hard on your muscles and your back and everything. Jesus became that, a carpenter, a servant. It goes on, verse 8, it says this, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now I want to tell you, that makes me pause. Jesus Christ, obedient, the Son of God, at the feet of God, left the feet of God to come here to this earth as a baby. And, whoops, I should put the other, I'm sorry. Philippians there, I'm sorry, I'm getting old, I forgot. But Jesus, at the feet of God, left heaven, came here, and became a servant, and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. A horrible way to die. But Jesus loved you, loved me, and came, sacrificed himself, and died for us. He came, remember Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, he came to redeem us from sin. He came to bruise the head of the devil. How could he do it? Well, three things. First, he had to live here as a human without sin. Jesus lived here for 33 years without sin. Perfect. Every day, every moment of every day, Jesus was completely perfect. Second, he, first, he needed to live without sin. Second, he needed to die with our sin. He had to live without sin. He had to die with our sin. But third... He needed to rise again. And I want to tell you today, Jesus did, 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 did. He did them all. Jesus Christ did exactly what the Bible said 
the Redeemer would do in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The last three verses that are here, verse 9, 10, and 11, they say this. Wherefore, verse 9, wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and watch things under the earth in hell. Every knee will bow. It says verse 11, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's exciting. Can I tell you today, there is coming a time when every person will bow. Every person will confess. That will include you and me. It will include people who are religious. It will include people who don't believe in God, atheists. It will include um, teachers who are against Christ. It will include the devil himself. His head is bruised and the devil himself will bow to Jesus Christ. Today, I want to ask, why would Jesus do this? Why? There's only one reason, and it's here. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you, me, any person, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why would Jesus Christ leave heaven, the feet of God? Why would Jesus leave the feet of God to come here to the earth to live without sin, to take on our sin and to rise from the dead after he had been crucified. Why? Because God loves you. And God loves me. And today, this next week, it's Christmas. We will exchange gifts with people we love. Uh, we, we purchase things thinking about them. Oh, we're, we get excited. Oh, they're going to love this gift. And we buy, we buy it. We come home. We wrap it. We get it ready on, on Christmas morning. We put it out. Oh, we're so excited. We're going to give them something that they need or want or love. Oh, it's going to be great. God has done that for you. And now it's your turn. Will you accept this or will you refuse? Uh, my wife has bought gifts for our, our children, grandchildren. Oh, she's wrapped them, wrapped them, wrapped them. She's so excited. Can you imagine if it comes when they come to our home and my wife brings them out here for you? She's excited. And our, grand, and our grandson or daughter says, hmm, don't want. Oh, it would hurt, hurt, hurt the heart of my wife. It's the same with God. God so loved you that he gave, and now he looks to you. Will you receive? If you have already received Jesus Christ, you need to thank God. You need to thank God for Jesus coming to save you. If you have never done that, you can do it right now. You say, how can I do it? Copy me, pray with me, mean it. Don't just, you need to mean it with all of your heart, but say, Dear Jesus, I understand I'm a sinner like Adam, Eve. I break your law again and again. I am under the law, cannot get out. I believe that you came here to redeem me, to buy me from sin. You came here and paid the price for my sin on the cross. You died, were buried, 
And I'm thankful that three days later, you rose from the grave. Today, I will trust you. I will take your gift offered to me of everlasting life. I want Jesus to come, become my Savior, my forgiveness, my payment for sin. I will trust Jesus and only Jesus in his name. Amen. Amen. I hope you prayed with me. If you prayed with me, I would, I would love for you to go to www.silentword.org slash saved and just fill out this form. It lets us know what decision that you made. By the way, we're going to rejoice with you. I will tell you right now, if you prayed with, with me this morning, the angels of heaven are rejoicing with you. And it's going to be a wonderful and exciting Christmas for you this year. If you've already been saved and you know people who have not, make it an emphasis this year to tell someone about Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful story. Don't let them miss heaven because you were silent. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time. Thank you for these wonderful verses. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die in our place, to rise from the grave, and to give us the gift of everlasting life. Thank you so much. We love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, next week, I promise you, I told you last week I was going to be teaching this, but I will be teaching next week, Lord willing. Next week. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, we really love you. Thank you for watching this Bible study. We'll see you next week.